Team Keep It Clean. What's going on? It's St. Graven here with another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Where you can ask me any NFL question you want and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, we got some great questions. Like every time, let's go ahead and get into it. Next question came from Tay. He said, good afternoon. Uh, I hope you and the fam are doing well. But I have a non-Raven related question. I noticed as of today watching the sports channels, not one person mentions the concern about Justin Herbert not making the playoffs or having the ability to get it done. Which is funny because I remember year two of Lamar playing that was a topic of discussion along with winning a playoff game. It's just crazy how the totem pole is moved for the other quarterbacks, but when it's Lamar, it's not the same. I just thought this would be an interesting topic to have your opinion on. Thank you for everything that you do uh, and wishing nothing but blessings for you and your family. Hey, appreciate that, Tay. Um, so I guess this was Raven related. Uh, but yeah, with um, with Lamar, he's, he's always going to be looked at differently. Um, him as a quarterback, he's always going to be judged differently uh, because he's not traditional. And... It's um it's it's sad, uh, but that's what it's gonna be for the entirety of his career. Uh so when he's compared to the likes of a Justin Herbert, they like they they're um the 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 metrics that people base things around them on are not the same. The 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 uh not even the standards, but the um what those QBs are held to is it, not gonna be uh the same. And that's how it's gonna be for his whole career. Next question came from my guy Makai. He said, Hey, Graven, I asked one YouTuber that I respect and watch, uh, would some pro style offensive coordinators work well in Baltimore? And he said, The Ravens have and probably will stick with Giro because Lamar has shown enough flaws in his game as a passer to not go full pro style on offense. So I ask you, do you think Lamar is good enough as a passer to have an Eric Bienemy or Joe Brady offense and keep up the great work? Yes, I certainly do. Lamar has already shown that he can throw the football. It's crazy that in, in year, what is this, year four for him? Is this year four, year five? Oh, no, he's going in fifth-year option. So next year will be year five. He's already shown he can throw the football. We, we know he can throw the football. And, like, that's, that's old news. Um, but a lot of the way that stuff is set up, it's like, what, what are we watching? And a lot of the, the, the situational stuff, it's like, what are we watching? Uh, the biggest thing um, that will really change everything, it would help Giro out so much, it would help Lamar out so much, uh, would be an offensive line. Offensive line would make such a big difference because then uh, if you have consistent time to throw the ball, oh, man, that, that would just do wonders for Lamar. Now, he got to help out the offensive line by making some quicker decisions, taking some more check downs, or getting rid of the ball, throwing it away sometimes, and the offensive line got to help him out too. Uh, and then with Giro, now, the offensive line can make all his stuff look better, but at the same time, that situational play calling is still going to be there. Uh, they they got to make some drastic <laughs> improvements, man, if they really want to take it to the next level. But, yes, uh, with an Eric Bieniemy or, or Joe Brady, especially Eric Bieniemy, just seeing that Kansas City Chiefs offense, the way that they set you up, it, it's, it's, like a, um, it's like watching a movie or something. Like the, the, the movie, you get an introduction to the movie and that's like the first quarter. Uh, and then uh, you recognize what the problem is. That's like late in the first quarter. You, and that, that's where the, the offense, like the, the, the Chiefs offense, they, they get in the feel for you. They, they trying to feel like, OK, what's this what's this bad guy in the movie? What, what, what are they going to be attacking me for? How are they going to be attacking me? So then in the second and third quarter, it's like the climax of the movie, the, the best parts of the movie. It's like, all right, this is where the offense is really going up and going off. They're getting all these different guys involved, and they they doing their thing. And then the fourth quarter is the ending where they come to a resolution. They completely fix whatever the problem was. They defeat the bad guy, and they use all of their, their, whether they're superheroes or they use all of their good guys to make it happen. It's the same way with, with the Chiefs offense. And Lamar Jack, oh, man, I, I, I think he would love it. I really do. I think he would love it. It won't happen, but I think he would, he would absolutely love it because that would be somebody that would really get everybody involved. And, and they play guys to their strengths. 
<laughs> Next question came from my guy Justin. Appreciate you being a patron. He said, "Now that the wound has healed." Uh, hey, what's up, Engraving? Hope all is well. Haven't sent in a question in a while, but I'm back. So first off, I made a prediction that was so off before the season started, but looking at our upcoming opponents, I'm gonna double back and re-predict a great season in 2022 of 16 and one or 14 and three. Oh, you really think Ravens going on a tear next year, huh? Uh, bold, I know, and we'll get into it another time, but I wanted to ask you, what do you think about our upcoming opponents? From what I can tell, our competition will be the Bengals and the Bills. Some people will say Miami, but with the healthy squad, we just let J.K. and Gus run all over them. Big Ben is retiring, uh, likely Brady too. I don't know about that one. We're going to see. I don't know about that one. Um, and he said maybe Matt Ryan will go. Uh, Denver got too much to get it together. Denver's a quarterback away. They right there. They are. They get a quarterback. Ooh, they're Denver back in business. Um, he said uh, <laughs> New England is okay, but they got a young quarterback. Jags and Jets, no competition. I, I wouldn't say that, man. I wouldn't say any given Sunday. Uh, Carolina and New Orleans have too much to get right. Uh, and New York Giants are okay, but not over our squad. Pittsburgh will weasel his way into somehow to fight, but Browns, to me, are no contest. So I'm feeling good. Am I jumping the gun? Yeah. <laughs> or, or do you have similar hopes with the new season coming up? Love to hear your thoughts and glad you've been safe throughout the whole 2022. Stay safe and stay blessed, brother. Appreciate it, Justin. I I just feel like it's so early. The reason I say it's so early is because we don't know the makeup of the Ravens. We don't know who the Ravens are going to have on their roster. Of course, we know some guys like Lamar, J.K., Gus, Marlon Humphrey, um, Adafi Away. Bowser when he's healthy, um, Patrick Queen, Malik Harrison, and Mark Andrews, Hollywood Rashad Bateman. We, we know a lot of guys that we'll have, but we don't know all the guys that we'll have. We don't know how the Ravens will be playing. Uh, you hope that things will be better. You hope the, the, the coordinating on offense and defense and the execution on offense and defense, and of course special teams too. You hope everything will be better, but we just don't know. Now, another thing that we just really don't know about is the opponent. We don't know how our, the opponent's rosters will be. And there's like, yeah, right now, you say, oh, we'll dust Miami. Miami don't even have a head coach right now. So we don't know what kind of philosophy they'll have. We don't know if they'll continue on the right trend or they'll just, since they fire Brian Flores, that'll mess everything. We just don't know. It, it's, it's so much that we don't know. The Giants, they fired their head coach too. So they could they could roll with Daniel Jones for one more year, or the new GM and coach could be like, "That's not our guy. We don't want that dude. Mm. We good off Daniel Jones." So it, it's just it, it's so much that we don't know about next year. This year ain't even done yet. Still got to get through the draft. Got to get through free agency. Of course, injuries is the most annoying part. Um, but it's it's just it's it's so much. And then. I know, yeah, we play the Jags. We play the last place teams. But it's like the Jags, they just beat the Colts in the last game of the season. Jags is one of them. And remember when Jags used to be really bad and Ravens were playing them on Monday Night Football? I forgot what year it was. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, we, oh, we about to dust these Jaguars. Oh, this thing, this thing about to get ugly. Nope. Wrong. So defensive game, Jaguars ended up winning. Everybody thought the Ravens were going to blow them out. They thought they were going to. Nope. Jaguars ended up winning. So my point when I say that is uh, it's any given Sunday. And we haven't even got through all the, the rest of the Sundays that are left in this season yet. So I think it's just way too early to be counting all these dubs for next season Sundays. Next question came from another Justin. His name is Justin R. He said, hey, man, love the videos. Listen to your videos while I'm at work every day uh, for about three weeks now. Oh, appreciate that. Hope it don't mess you up on a job because I'm one of them people that if I'm like writing something, hopefully you're not a scribe or something. But if I'm writing something and I'm listening to something, I can't do both at the same time because I will end up writing what I'm listening to. Like I can't speak and write at the same time unless I'm writing what I'm, unless I'm writing what I'm saying. But if I'm if I'm speak or and what I'm speaking about is what I'm writing. If I'm speaking to somebody about something completely different and trying to write at the same time, I can't do it. Uh, but I'm sure you 50 times better than me. Anyway, he said I wanted to hear about what you think about J.K. Dobbins. He has not really been our guy before, and now with this injury, how can we know if he is even as talented as we think? All right, so J.K. Dobbins, um, as a rookie, he wasn't our guy initially. But then down the stretch, 
he ended up being a guy. He was getting the bulk of the carries. He was getting the bulk of the workload. They loved J.K. Dobbins, and you could tell from uh, the carries. Mark Ingram, they ended up having him inactive, and it was J.K. and Gus and Juss. J.K., Gus, and Juss. It was their show, J.K. being the leader of that. And then going into this season, J.K. Dobbins was expected to be the starter. So he was going to be the guy, and he had started to be the guy toward the end of 2020 season so he, he was on his way anyway he said i have not seen anything that puts him off from the other running backs i have seen gus edwards show himself going through the middle of the line and jk got speed but what's really so special i love him as a person but he really just does not have me convinced love all the team keep it clean thanks for keeping me entertained at work every day all right appreciate, appreciate the honesty in this question uh with jk dobbins um if i i take it that you probably didn't really like ray Rice. Because they they like the same person. They even got the same number. They look like they're about the same size. J.K. Dobbins look like he's a little, little bigger, a little more muscle. But their running style is extremely similar. It's so weird, man. If Ray Rice, like, if he was healthy and stuff and suited up and, and put on J.K. Dobbins' uniform, it would be the same person. Same person. Uh, with J.K. Dobbins, one of the things that I, I love from him the most is um, the way that he finds, like, he levels himself, his balance. Because J.K., he could get hit, he can get popped, he may be making a cut, he may be making somebody miss, and it may look like he's about to fall to the ground, and he'll stumble, he'll go, oh, but then he'll put, he'll put that hand on the turf, put, pick himself back up, and get that thing rolling again. I, I, I love when he does that. I mean, I would hope that he would just stay up the whole time, but stuff happens, and sometimes you fall down. Um, but J.K. Dobbins, um, he just got it, man. Uh, he can be... Uh, a home run hitter He can be a closer That's Gus Edwards as well um, JK gives you that uh, He gives you like this sneaky power He ain't got the power of a Gus Edwards But he gives you like this this sneaky power That you sometimes You don't even see it coming um, So JK he, and, and I think this season Especially when you watch last season And then you watch this season I think that right there Should help you see uh, the value of a J.K. Dobbins And of course Gus Edwards as well But your question was just primarily focused on J.K. Dobbins I think when you watch this season and You, you can just see how much J.K. Dobbins was missed You, you can see how much um, A running back catching a pass out of the backfield Was missed or catching a check down You can see how there was such a, a lack of explosion From our running backs early on in this season That was missed You can see that Ravens ain't even run RPO like that J.K. Dobbins would do that. That was missed. Like the the whole running game for the Ravens, it changed so much because J.K. Dobbins was missed. Next question came from my guy Eric. He said, "Yo, Engraven, hope you and your fam are doing well. Pretty sure you got this question before, but I'm curious to see if your answer will change. Should the Ravens bring in Antonio Brown for next season? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. Um, this last season, uh. Before the Super Bowl, they had a shot. Before the Bucks Super Bowl, before the Bucks won the Super Bowl, uh, they had a shot. Even after they won the Super Bowl, because Bucks didn't initially bring him back, they waited and waited and waited. Um, and I think he thought that he was going to get a better deal from somewhere else, but it didn't end up happening. Um, but I, I, as far as the football player, that that that'd be cool. Be a really good receiver. Um, wouldn't cost much, but now. I just um no I, that 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 ship has sailed uh and it was it was a ship that was it was very close it was at the port getting ready to take off for the longest but it was just waiting around but then yeah it it like officially sailed uh this year and I'm probably with the Ravens it probably had been officially sailed um they of course wouldn't come out and say it they they would always give that general answer oh we'll always do what's best for our football team we'll we all we take a look at everybody and da -da -da -da, but no uh, oh anyway he still had more he said you might have seen ab reposting a video on instagram where kodak says that ab should have came to baltimore and for some reason that just got me thinking now obviously there are a lot of off-field concerns with antonio brown but he is still an above average wide receiver and with a good offensive coordinator next year I can't even imagine what defenses would do to stop a healthy Lamar. Dobbins, Gus, Mandrews, Hollywood, Bateman, and A.B. One problem I would be scared to happen is if we were to bring in Brown, would Lamar force feed him like he already does with Mark Andrews? However, if Lamar can spread the ball around, I, I think it definitely couldn't hurt to give Lamar on the offense another threat. Anyways, just like Antonio Brown when it comes to playing with the Bucks, I'm out. 
I like that one, man. Um, yeah, again, on, on the field, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it would be great. It would be great to have all those weapons and all those quality weapons. And we got some quality weapons now, but then adding Antonio Brown, another quality weapon. But it would just be that fear. Because if... Because the, the, the big thing was like, oh, man, um, he, he, he has some, some big yikes moments with the Steelers, uh, then with the Raiders, then even with the, the Bills. Because I believe that it was said that he was originally traded to the Bills, but he was like, Mm-mm, nope, not doing it, not doing it. And then so that, that got erased. Um, then he got traded to the Raiders, and that was a big yikes. Then on the Patriots. Um, he was quiet with the Patriots, but then the whole story about him and what's the name came out. So then they cut him. Then he went with Brady again to the Bucks, and he was quiet. Won the Super Bowl. It was like, oh, okay, hey, okay, they got they got something now. All right, cool, cool, cool. But then still on it, they brought the Bucks brought him back, and then all this stuff happened. And he said that Bruce Arians told him to get off the field. Um, and that's the team keep it clean version. You could refer to Antonio Brown for the uh the detailed version of that. Um, but anyway, he but the way that he handled it, like I and mean, we don't know their dynamic. We don't know Bruce Arians and Antonio Brown dynamic. So that could I'm sure that contributed to him walking off. But ah, uh, that that's just so tough, man. Because I want to say, oh yeah, you you can't do that. You can't do that because because you can't. Um. Because in, even in a professional world, man, because football is a business, uh, you even if you don't see eye to eye with your manager, and because I done had some bad experience with not seeing eye to eye with my manager before. Ooh, boy, just some, ugh. I'm glad the past is the past. Uh, but anyway, um, you you got to handle yourself better and more professionally. Uh, and that was just a rough look. But think about this too, with the Ravens and their offense and their offensive coordinators, the way their scheme is set up. If he was upset that he wasn't going to get his catches to get his incentives, imagine, <laughs> imagine what would happen to him here with the Ravens. Ooh, if he was upset there, oh, he would be just furious here. Next question came from my guy Lance. He said, hey, hope everything is well. I want to speak how on hypothetically getting Sauce Gardner. If Ravens bring back Chuck Clark Peters, Humphrey with the addition of Sauce Gardner, don't forget Tay-Tay too. He said, I think our pass protection will be elite come playoffs. Oh, you mean pass defense. Uh, you, have, you have to have good corners, uh, or you have two good corners in Sauce Gardner and Peters, and then you can kind of rotate Marlon Humphrey to like free safety or strong safety. And then you have these underrated guys like Chuck and Brandon Stevens that can make plays on the ball. What's your thoughts on the possible rotation and how well that will fit the Ravens' defense? Now, we know uh, Ravens, they love the, this about the more you can do. With Marlon Humphrey a safety? No. He doesn't need to be a safety at all. He needs to stay right at corner, whether he be a slot corner, outside corner with the big physical receivers. Don't don't put them on a little shifty guys, though. You know them little short shifty guys? They be, they be getting the best of Marlon Humphrey. Man. Um... And he still he still got to get redemption for AJ Brown. AJ Brown was oh he was dogging Marlon Humphrey in the playoffs of the Titans game. But usually Marlon Humphrey matches up better against them bigger receivers. Um, Marcus Peters yeah but yeah for Marlon Humphrey to safety no I, no 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 let your safeties be safety. I mean they got a corner play, playing safety last year with Brandon Stevens. Um, they had Jimmy Smith at safety a little bit but that's because he was slowing down. Marlon Humphrey ain't slowing down yet. He ain't there yet. So you get Sauce Gardner okay cool. Let him play second. Let him play corner. Let him play. Don't switch his position. Don't change him. Don't have him be something that he's not. Let that man play corner. Next question came from my guy Greg and B Moore. He said, "Hey, Graven and everyone watching, hope everybody's doing okay." It's insane that this month, ten years ago, was Ravens versus Patriots AFC title game where Lee Evans drop or the Sterling Moore knockout, uh, and Billy Cundiff missed that field goal at the end. I was really sick that weekend, and the, and the end of all that is all. That's all I remember. My point is that game got us Justin Tucker, and sometimes bad things can get you better things later on. And maybe we'll get a player that Ravens will really want in the draft that they wouldn't have gotten if they made the playoffs. So I'm just excited to see what Ravens do at 14. But that's definitely a positive way of looking at it. So I, I can respect that and appreciate it. Uh, I'm guessing offensive line, defensive line, or defensive back. What position do you think they might go after in the first round? Um, offensive line, yeah. Defensive line, yeah. Secondary, too. Um, mm, or oh, a linebacker. I think a linebacker could be a sneaky one. If they really doing best available, and the best available is a linebacker, because I just... 
I feel that they they don't trust Patrick Queen yet, and you you want you want to wait and give him time, but at the same time you don't want to wait too long. So I think that could be a sneaky one. He said, also, I'm very nervous that this might be LJ's last year as a Raven. No real reason except the feeling I have if something unfortunate happens again. Should the Ravens try to overpay their backup QB to try to keep Tyler Huntley just in case? No. No. Tyler Huntley is a nice backup. Love him. But they, they can't do that. You can't do that. Um, because your, your starters, your starter for a reason. You just have to find another guy to come in and be the backup uh, for Lamar. You, you can't overpay your backup quarterback. You don't want to do that. Uh, because there's only so much salary cap uh, that goes around. Um, and we know the salary cap is going to keep going up every year. But still, you, you, I would say no to that one. He said, I think Huntley is gone. But if he stays, it gives the Ravens that option. Hopefully before the season starts, Lamar signs that big fat contract he has earned. But we'll see. That's it. Hope you and everyone in the community has a great day and stay staying safe. I appreciate you, Greg. Next question came from Aditya, and he said, Hey, Graven, hope you're good. Hope Team Keeping Clean is good. Uh, I'm a member, and I'm good. Hey, that's good. Uh, this offseason has to be something for the injuries to our starters, leaves us to gamble with their future. Number one, will JK and his return be like APs after injury, or will we just have to witness what happened to, um, to, Bo, oh, to Bo Jackson, although the injury was different? Hopefully, uh, J.K., it can be like an Adrian Peterson thing to where they had this big, gruesome, crazy injury, but they come back better than ever. Number two, Marcus Peters. We missed that one a lot uh, this season, that cornerback. But are we sure that the ACL tear will leave him fully healthy? Uh, uh, yeah, again, it's the same thing. Hopefully, hopefully he is. Hopefully it's not that thing where people say it takes another, a whole other year to really recover. Um, but this is why cornerback is a very big priority. It should be a big priority for the Ravens because – you lost both your guys, both your starting cornerbacks. Your one, your two, your one A, one B, whatever you want to call it. You lost both of them. And then you got Tavon Young, who's had an injury history. You're losing Jimmy Smith. You're losing Anthony Averett. So secondary is that is is is, is very essential. Number three, offensive line. Will Ronnie be healthy next year? Oof. That's we can hope. We we can hope. And number four, the defensive ends and defensive tackles. The Ravens need a close to 10 sack guy on the team. Calais was that in Jacksonville. Well, back to my guy's question real quick because my camera died. Um, with the defensive ends at the D-line, he said Ravens need a close to a 10-sack guy on the team because Calais was that in Duval. Not anymore. They need what would help them out because we know Wink's going to be here and he's going to be himself and run that same scheme the same way. But what would help them out was an interior pass or somebody that could bring interior pressure, like really get after it from the middle because – it, it makes the quarterback's job a lot easier when the, the pass rushes. They can get in from the outside, but he just step up a little bit, then oh, make the throw. But if you got that pressure in your face, we've seen it with Lamar Jackson a lot, and he's like the fastest quarterback in the league. If that pressure comes in his face, that just messes everything up. That messes everything up from jump. So that's the type of defensive lineman the Ravens need. Hopefully Matt Abike could take that jump. Uh, or Ravens could draft a guy too. Or maybe sign a guy that can really bring interior pressure, and that would do wonders for them. He said, let's be serious. You can't solve all the flaws in one offseason. The Ravens have to gamble. I believe they will believe in Peters, but keep a plan B for Ronnie and the running backs. They might not even care uh, for a pass rusher this offseason. Well, I think they actually have to care because you lost your pass rusher, um, Tyus Bowser, in the last game of the season to a torn Achilles. So you got to care about pass rushers. That fair way ain't going to do it by itself. So I would expect them to um, bring back uh, Justin Houston. Um, then you got Dalen Hayes too. He could have a bigger role uh, next, the beginning of next year, uh, with Tyus Bowser probably being out. But also they probably bring in somebody else, maybe a late draft pick or something like that. We just gotta see how it all works out. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to graven.